Hi, and welcome to Tech for PD. I'm Jim. And I'm Chad. And today we're going to be talking about system engineering in the context of PLM. So to set the stage, uh, Jim, why is system engineering important? Yeah, so systems engineering, if we look at the products that are coming to market today, uh, we're seeing smarter products. We're seeing products that uh, rely more on software and the interaction between software, mechanics, and electronics um, to really deliver their capabilities. Yeah. Um, some, uh, some of the re my research actually recently has shown that there's more innovation being driven by software than mechanical and electrical. Mm -hmm. um, and to the point, um, I talked to a tier one automotive supplier, not in the infotainment side, in the, in the you know, yeah. mechanic side of things, that said they're now a software company. They have more software engineers than mechanical and electrical engineers doing things like transmissions. Yeah, that's crazy. So uh, another related topic to requirements is actually system simulations. So you, and it's not just necessarily uh, finite an element analysis. It's also 1D simulations, mathematical modeling, also some multidisciplinary stuff. So that's that's a close topic too. Yeah, and because it's, it's important, I think, to get this right up front, to get the requirements right, right. then to allocate it down to the different disciplines that are going to be designing it. And simulation is just one more way to, to help get that right. But And that's a topic we'll probably dig into uh, later. Yeah. Um, and there are lots of specialty vendors uh, focusing right now on, on systems engineering, on the systems modeling side. Um, tremendous best of breed market there right yeah. now. Uh, but also the, the big PLM vendors are starting to get very interested, the Siemens, the Dassos, uh, the PTCs, um, IBM's obviously involved uh, as well with Doors and Rational. Right. Um, yep. So lots lots going on. Yeah, and there's a couple more uh, smaller guys that are relevant here too. Sci Design is a new company that just came out. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit closer to the requirements connecting into simulations, okay. which, is, which is a good approach. Also, Vitec is another one that falls into the same category, more of one of those specialty providers. Yeah. And in the context of PLM, hopefully all the way down to validation. But the uh, question is whether we're ready for that. So, Yep. So, Chad, I'm sure you've got an opinion on systems engineering and PLM. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I firmly believe that um, a lot of organizations need to adopt system engineering capabilities within PLM. And here's why. Um, Almost every single product made today is a smart product and includes mechanics, electronics, and software. And you need to be able to manage requirements to those items, right? Um, and if you look at PLM, that is, you know, currently and in the near future, it's going to be where all those artifacts live, right? And it's also where all those engineering processes and new product development processes, it's where they run. So um, I, I think it's, the system engineering process is all about integration, mm -hmm. right? It's all about the integrated view and understanding if one thing changes, all these other things change. And with that living in PLM, it only makes sense. I can tell you're trying to bait me with integration. I'm not, I'm not going down that path this time. It's, uh, it's not worked out for me. Um, I, I, I love integration. You know me. You know me. But uh, we're not ready for that yet. I think when you... When you look at the systems engineering market, the way it stands today, it's a best of breed market. It's a it's an mm. area for specialists. There are specialists that um, are working on systems, you know, systems modeling, um, allocation of requirements. Maybe maybe requirements comes comes into PLM and allocation of requirements. Um, but then you've got different tools that are, are being used to manage the the development of each. Um, you, you mentioned earlier the simulation vendors. Mm -hmm. you know, that's especially kind of a solution. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love integration. We're just we're not ready. Systems engineering right now is going to be it's it's too much to say we're going to tweak PLM and get systems engineering out of it. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a wholesale change. So right now systems engineering is uh, is not entirely separate. Mm -hmm but it requires best of breed vendors. Interesting. Well, I, you know, I agree that it's early on. You know, there, there are some around the periphery that are innovating, mm -hmm. to, your, right. to your point. Um, My fancy framework. But I believe that there's just too much value to be gained. Um, I know it's, you know, there is going to be some risk. There is going to be figuring out, some figuring it out along the way. But I think the value of understanding when a requirement changes and it affects these items in your bill of material, 
some of which are software, some of which are electronic, some of which are mechanical. Um, if you keep them in siloed databases and separate, then you just can't have that integrated view. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and it needs to come back up too, right? If you've got the, the, a change in mechanical, uh, the mm -hmm. mechanical structure, you may need to change the control software. So, right. you know, so I agree, absolutely. Except for I disagree because we're just not ready. Uh, if you look at where we are today with systems engineering, we've got maybe requirements in one place, but then you go and you start developing the, the mechanics. You start, you know, and you've got mechanical-oriented PDM systems that are managing yeah. that process in PLM systems. You're, you're managing the um, development of the software in, you know, your application lifecycle management tools. And there's just so much there. You're not going to just start managing work and process software in PLM. It's just not going to happen. Mm. Um, electrical, there are tools over there, you know, they're just more overlap with PDM. So you're going to end up with this, uh, you know, maybe this Uber PLM at some point that then has what's today traditional PLM for the mechanical and potentially electrical side. But the whole software development side of things is just not going to somehow magically fold underneath PLM. It's just hmm. not realistic. We're not, we're just not ready for it. All right. No well, magic. I, I disagree. I, I really do think that most organizations need to adopt system engineering in PLM because of the complexity. It helps them manage the complexity. I think there's enough value there that it overcomes the risk that's there. And you're saying a federated granular approach? Absolutely. Or right. do you believe in magic? That's the debate. <laughs> All right, well, that was the debate. Now let's take a look at what's going to happen in the future. So, Jim, what do you think is going to be happening next for right. system engineering and PLM? So, so over the next five years, I think what we're going to see is exactly what you were saying should be happening right now. Um, I, I do think that's the long-term direction. I think what we're going to see is um, an overall uh, systems PLM emerge, and probably out of the existing PLM vendors, a systems PLM that starts with requirements and systems modeling, drives down to the different design elements, and then we're going to see different tools underneath that to manage um, things like work and process software next yeah. to things that are managing the mechanical design and integrated to catch that, uh, that interplay and, and the changes that you talked about. So I do think that's the direction we're going to head all the way down through design validation and systems validation on the back end. I think that will all be in, in one place. I just think it's going to take a little while. Interesting. Okay. Well, I, I think that there's an opportunity for system engineering to follow a trend that's actually starting right now. So if you look at, uh, for example, SolidWorks Mechanical Conceptual, that app includes all the capabilities you need for conceptual design. There's some um, sketching, geometry modeling, there's some kinematics, and some data management, all in one app. So it supports the procedure. Right. Same sort of thing with Mentor Graphics um, FlowTherm tool. It includes some geometry modeling, mm -hmm. some EDA import, some thermal and CFD analysis, stuff you need to support that yeah. procedure. I think the same opportunity exists for system engineering to not make system engineers run around to all sorts of different tools. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, let's take a look at the consequences from the last episode. Yeah, it's time. All right. Hey folks, that's right. Uh, you're seeing my face and that means that I lost the last debate. So uh, let's go ahead and get this over with. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Then tip me over and pour me out. <laughs> nice. All right, well, that was our episode for today. We'd like to thank our founding sponsor, PTC, for their continued support. See you next time.